So this is the McLaren 765 LT. And for those of you that don't know, this is the limited edition, lightweight, track-focused version of the McLaren 720S. So there are 765 of these worldwide, each individually numbered. And today I'm going to show you some of the different ways in how you can spec this car. I'm going to show you some of the key options. And look, if you're in the market for a 765, hopefully you're going to find this video pretty useful. Just before we get into the video, I just wanted to remind people of our sister company, Elevate Finance. Um, we're a finance brokerage for luxury performance supercars. Um, if you are looking for a quote or advice on finance, please get in touch with these guys. They're the absolute experts. Um, and we'll leave their contact details below. Okay, so we'll start off by looking at some of the different paint options you can get for the 765 LT. Um, and there are sort of different levels that McLaren do. Um, there is a standard level where these are sort of no cost. Um, there's three different options you can get. This is white, silver, and onyx black. Obviously, if you're spending the best part of 300,000 pounds plus uh, on your car, it's unlikely you would have gone for one of the standard colors. You'd have more likely gone a level up to what McLaren called the special colors. These are a little bit more metallic, and obviously cost a bit more. And there are five colors you can get for this. So you have Sicilian yellow, Silica White, Curacao Blue, McLaren Orange, and Luminaire, which is a sort of green color. Um, but there is another level up above that, which McLaren call the Elite Paints. Now these tend to be highly metallic. There's a lot more depth in the paint, and especially under the sun, these can really glisten in quite an intense way. They look amazing. Um, I believe there are nine different paints you can get. I won't go through them all, uh, but you have the likes of the Chicane Effect, which is what we had a 765 in just before this one. That looks amazing. People will know it from the 675 LT as well. And um, there's Vega Blue. There's a new color called Nardo Orange, um, Saros, and there's a few others. But Elite Paints look brilliant. Um, if you want to go a little bit off menu, there is the MSO Paints, like this one. MSO Lantana Purple. Hopefully you'll agree it looks incredible in this color. Um, but there are all sorts of colors. These obviously tend to be a lot rarer, um, harder to find, but they do exist somewhere in the world and obviously have to pay a bit more for an MSO paint. If you want to spend a bit more money, there is another option. You can go down the MSO bespoke way and this is where things can get really crazy. You create something that's never existed before. Talking about fades of paint, you can get chroma flare paints where things look different colors from different angles. Obviously things can get a little bit expensive when you go down the bespoke route. Um, if you really want to spend the maximum money, there is the option of getting a full carbon fiber body. I believe it's around 175,000 pounds. Obviously it looks incredible, but it's gonna break the bank a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna now look at some of the key options on the car. And I'm gonna start with this, the double glazed engine window. I think it's actually possibly the most noteworthy option on the 765 LT um, and not one that everyone knows about. So it's a 7,000 pound option, so it is quite expensive. Not many people have specced it, it seems. Um, but I think it's pretty cool because look, this is bringing the engine both visibly and audibly into the cabin. Obviously, you can see it through the glass up here as well. Although this car has been spec with privacy glass, it's not that easy. But the whole point of it is it's the engine that sits right behind you and you can look directly into it and it's bringing the noise into it. So it is double glazed. It's made of glass and carbon fiber. Um, and whilst I'd stop short of saying it's a, a must have option, personally, I think it's a very cool thing to have. And fast forward a few years, when we talk about values and collectability, I think that's an option that is gonna add a lot of value and they'll command a premium going forward. So there is the option of having the MSO roof scoop on the 765, but 
it is quite a different proposition to what it was on the 675 and also on the 600 LT that came before this car. The main difference being that the roof scoop does not act as an air intake and it does not feed directly into the engine's plenum um, like it did on those previous cars. It really is more of a cosmetic thing. Um, I guess you've got to decide whether you like it or not in terms of visually. Um, some people say it looks a little bit aftermarket and it's just not that functional. Um, it does help cool the whole powertrain a little bit. They say it, it reduces temperature by 10 degrees on a track day. Um, so it has that little bit of function, but nothing like previous roof scoops. It sits a little bit further back. And also the main downside of it is really how much it reduces visibility because it really plonks straight through the middle. And when you're looking through the rear window, you really can't see it a lot. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about carbon fiber. Obviously McLaren, one of the first manufacturers to really go crazy with carbon fiber. There's always a sense that an LT especially should come with plenty of carbon fiber options. Um, so at the very least, I think you'll want the carbon fiber exterior pack one. Um, so for that, you get the carbon fiber hood intakes here. You get the carbon fiber mirrors and you get the carbon fiber intakes on the rear fenders here. Then if you want to spend a bit more money, you'll probably want to get carbon fiber exterior pack two. So for exterior pack two, you get this whole front splitter in carbon. So that's a massive part. You get the little nice flicks here. Um, you also get the whole side skirts in carbon fiber, really nicely sculpted, loads going on there. And then finally, you also get the rear bumper, the lower rear bumper, which includes these little aero flicks and then all across the bumper very nicely there. That is the most expensive of the carbon packs. Um, but then the final carbon pack, which you'll want to get, is the carbon fiber pack exterior three. For that, you get the front air intakes here, which is all around this headlight. Um, you also get the carbon fiber roof, which is that sort of T section here. So all together, all the packs, this car's got all three packs, looks amazing and it's definitely gonna make the car more desirable. And then additionally, outside of the carbon fiber packs, there are a number of other carbon fiber options that you can tick as well. Um, so just here on the exterior door upper is what it's called. Um, you might have seen this as Gorilla Glass on the 720S. That is not available on the LT, I assume down to weight. You can get that in carbon fiber. Um, down here, you'll notice the MSO carbon fiber louvres. I think that's one of the really important ones to get. They just so nicely sculpted into the body um, and just add a lot of aggression to the look of the car. That is a good one. You can actually spec the full bonnet in carbon fiber. Personally, I'm not sure if you want to do that unless you want a lot of contrast and a lot going on in the car, um, but that is available. And then one that this car doesn't have is the rear aero bridge. It is quite a cool one, I must admit. Um, where you can get all this section here in carbon fiber. Um, but you'll notice here, it's just in the palladium silver. Um, that is an expensive option. And then another one this car doesn't have, and I actually don't think I've seen one with it yet, is you can get the full active rear spoiler in carbon fiber. I actually think it looks really nice in the body color. You can get that in carbon. And then finally, one down here you can get, and this car has it, is the full rear diffuser. That's a separate option to the rear bumper, um, but all, look at all those nice fins down there. Really, really cool to have that in carbon. And just on this, one more thing worth mentioning, if you don't wanna spend all that money on carbon fiber and you don't like the look of the sort of standard palladium silver finish on those parts, you can spec something called the MSO Black Pack. It's still a very expensive option, but it's cheaper than the carbon. And instead of getting that palladium, you get everything in gloss black. And um, what I would say, especially on a brighter car, the gloss black just gives that really sharp contrast to the car, more so than the carbon, um, and just gives you a different look and obviously saves you a few quid uh, from not specking the carbon fiber. Okay, so now onto the wheels and the brakes. Um, so interestingly for the 765 Coupe, there is only one wheel design. There is actually an additional wheel design for the Spider, 
um, but it's this design here. And these are the ultra lightweight wheels. I believe they're the lightest ever wheels that McLaren have produced. Um, and you can get them in a few different finishes. So the basic finish is something called platinum where they're basically all silver. Um, but with that, you don't get this 765 LT logo there, which I think is, looks really good. It's laser engraved into the wheel. Um, to get that, you'll either have to pick the stealth wheels, which is basically like all dark gray, or this wheel, which is the satin diamond cut wheel, which you'll notice has a few of the spokes are diamond cut, which just helps give the wheels a little bit of lift visually. You can also spec them in gloss black as well. Um, on the brakes, so as standard, you get carbon ceramic brakes, um, which are perfectly good, but there is an option to upgrade to the track brakes. And these are the brakes from the McLaren Senna, which journalists rave about how unbelievably good they are. Um, so if you do go for that upgrade, the discs and the pads, and you'll get some unbelievably good performance from the brakes. They're much better resistance to fade um, for high speed performance braking they are better. So if you're gonna use this as a real track car, it might be worth going for that. But if you're gonna use the car more as a, a road car or a casual track day user, the carbon ceramic standard brakes are absolutely fine. Just quickly on the brake calipers, obviously you can spec this in various different colors, but I do like them in orange, mainly because it matches the LT badging which comes on the car, um, which comes on all of the LTs. And also on this car, you'll notice it also matches the interior. I'll just mention as well, there are two different types of tire that the 765 LT comes with. These are the Pirelli P0s. These are good for sort of regular road use, low temperature use, um, and what most cars will come with. But you can go for the Pirelli Trofeo R tires. These are basically for dry use only. You would not want to use those tires in the wet. Um, and actually for very high temperatures, obviously on track. And just while we're on track use, it might just be worth looking out for a couple of the packs. So you have the Club Sport pack, um, which not only gives you the upgraded track brakes, it also gives you the Senna racing seats, which I'll touch on in a minute, um, and track telemetry and a few carbon fiber elements in satin. One step above that, there is the Club Sport Pro pack, that's for the real track day pros because you also get four point harnesses and a titanium roll bar. Okay, so onto the interior now, and we will start by looking at the different seat options as this is the subject of sort of much debate amongst 765 owners. Um, so this car comes with the comfort seats or as known as the sport seats. Um, they're eight way electric, they're heated, They've got memory function. They also allow for comfort entry and exit. If you're gonna do a lot of sort of long journeys in your 765, these seats are gonna definitely provide the most support, the most comfort. Um, they also look good. They've got carbon fiber backs and they're probably the most sort of user friendly. Um, the other seats options are Firstly, the carbon fiber racing seats there are actually the seats that come standard on the car, and they're the seats from the P1. Obviously, a little bit more track focused, and they allow for racing harnesses. Um, and that is the seat which I think a lot of people will go for. This car was actually originally specified with those seats, um, but the previous owner of the car actually swapped them for these sport seats. Um, and then the final option is the Senna seats, the so super lightweight racing seats, um, and they definitely provide the most wow factor. The car we had previous to this in Chicane came with those seats and they do look amazing. Um, they're obviously much lighter, um, they're much more track focused. You feel like you're in a race car if you spec those seats. And I, I think for collectability in the future, especially if you're gonna have a car that's, you're not gonna drive much, it's gonna be more of a, a garage queen, the center seats are possibly the ones to go for. Just one final thing to mention on the seats, on both the P1 seats and the center seats, you've actually got two different sizes to choose from. You have the regular size, or you also have the touring size. The only real difference on the touring is it comes with thinner seat pads. So you get a little bit more space and room. Um, so if you are sort of a larger frame, you might just want to think about getting the touring seats. Okay, so when it comes to the actual sort of themes of the interior, um, there are a number of different themes and colors you can get. Um, I guess one of the main choices you'll want to make is whether you choose Alcantara or leather. 
Um, most of the 765s I've seen have been in Alcantara. Being a track car, uh, the lighter material, the material that gives you a little bit more grip in the seat is Alcantara. So, and I think McLaren have actually gone to extra lengths to make the Alcantara interiors look a little bit nicer. Um, so you can get something called a by McLaren design interior um, like this, where you actually get the sort of detailing laser etched into the seats. Um, without that, it can look quite plain if I'm honest, um, but a bit of contrast stitching I would definitely look out for. Just gives the interior a little bit of lift. Um, if you do go for one of the leather interiors, they don't seem to have the same sort of details. Um, so if you do actually spec the center seats, you can actually get the different parts of the seats all perforated uh, and the outlines of those parts in the color of your choice. It really does look amazing. We had it on the chicane gray car and with the burnt orange perforation, it does look incredible. Okay, so I've discussed carbon fiber on the exterior. Now I wanna discuss carbon fiber on the interior. One of the differences between the interior and exterior is it's all gloss externally and internally it's all done in satin carbon fiber, which is how I think it should be. Um, obviously being a carbon fiber tub, the whole surround is in carbon. The whole body structure is in carbon from the floors, the whole central tunnel. Um, so you're surrounded in it. But there are a couple of packs one of the packs is actually standard, um, not standard on the 720S, but it is on the 765 as the primary interior component. So that gives you the carbon fiber steering wheel. Um, it gives you the little section here, which surrounds all the dynamic control buttons, and it gives you the window switch surrounds. But the optional pack is the secondary components. And that I think is a good option to look out for. That gives you the folding display here with the carbon finish gives you the whole infotainment surround in carbon and it also gives you the door trims. Um, there are, outside of those packs, a couple more which are MSO parts. That's here, the sills, which I think are a really good one to get because it's the first thing you see when you open the door. Um, and then finally, the last thing is you could get the top of the steering wheel in carbon fiber as well. The only thing about that is you lose the little 12 o'clock marker, which I think is a nice little touch. Okay, so the final few options I want to point out, um, and these are more related to sort of convenience and technology. Um, I'll start off with the vehicle lift, as I think that is an absolute must have option. Um, to be fair, it's rare to see any McLaren without a vehicle lift as an option, um, but this car does sit very low. And the last thing you want to do, especially if you've got that carbon fiber front splitter, is scrape that on a speed bump or a steep uh, drive. Next up, reverse camera, or even better, surround cameras. If you're regularly parking your LT in tight spaces, you're gonna be very grateful to have the cameras to help you, um, you know, especially if you're parking next to a curb. The surround cameras just give you such a better view of how close you are to the curb. It's gonna be very handy. Um, so just on the sound system, so as much as I've got a fantastic speaker just sitting there right over my shoulder, if you are into your music, you might want to upgrade the sound system to the Bauer and Wilkins. As standard, you only get four speakers, but with the Bauer and Wilkins, you get 12 speakers, and it's definitely a much better sound system. So the final option I want to mention, um, so if you want your car to be a little bit more track orientated, you might want to spec the track cameras. Um, so as much as you get track telemetry as standard, where you can record your lap times and things like that, to get the track cameras, is an upgrade and you get three cameras. You get a camera in the front bumper, you get a camera in the rear bumper, and you also get an onboard camera to, for those POV views. So if you wanna really hone your track skills, those three cameras and you can watch back how you're performing on track is a great thing to have. Okay, so that's it how to spec your McLaren 765LT. What an incredible spec this is. We'd love to hear what you think of this spec. How would you spec your 765? Please leave your comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please do that. And we'll have another video for you again very soon.